Hello, divine stars. How are you? We are back with another pick a card reading. This reading is going to be about life purpose. Now I'm going to put a little disqualifier in there. A life purpose, an incarnation objective reading, a life path, all of that is very individualistic, very, very personal. So it's going to be difficult to get your exact raison d'etre with a general pick a card reading. With that said, what we are going to go for and what my intention was when I shuffled these cards was to get a message that will help those who choose stack one, the rainforest jasper, step deck two, fluorite, Deck three, Moonstone. Deck four, Unakite. For each person who chooses one of these decks, that they will get a message, something that will help them, something that will resonate with them to help them for this lifetime, for what they're dealing with right now. Because again, you need an individual reading in order to know for sure, without a doubt, what you came here to do to get specifics, to get really on target, on point, on how that would look and how you should move. Okay, now that I've read the fine print and made the disclaimer, let us go. I hope you've had enough time to pick the decks. Again, Rainforest Jasper, Fluorite, Moonstone, Unakite. And today we're using the Ask Your Guide cards by Sonia Choquette. We're using the Water Crystal Oracle by Dr. Masuru Emoto. We're using the Keepers of the Light deck. And that is by, who is that by? Kyle Gray, nice and easy. Keep forgetting it though, right? And then we're going to use the Medunitair Oracle as well as Lenormand. So we're going to do a little bit of Oracle spirit as well as just let's get to the bottom of it. All right. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Release it. In. Out. In. Out. Choose your deck, and we're going to get started, okay? For those of you who chose deck one, that would be the Rainforest Jasper, a beautiful variegated stone, greens, oranges. Let the Healing Hado release. The Shekinah, Life Force. Aphrodite, okay, for those of you who chose deck one, I'm going to start, let's start with the Shekinah, shall we? It's our, from our Keepers of the Light deck, because there's a lot going on with the Nekabet the Haru, and we also have <laughs> cross as well as tree. So let's start with this and then we will get into it further. The Shekinah, sacred self, unleash your spirit, express your gifts, dance the sacred rhythm of life. Don't feel the need to hold back or dampen your spirit. This is a time to celebrate. There is a feeling of dance and joy around you at this time as you fully recognize your splendor. You are a sacred being who defies gravity every day just by being alive and brings a sense of balance and equality to the world. So with that being our lead card, because I'm going to go with our Seekers of the Light card as our first card. You dancing the joy of life. You celebrating spirit. 
you being joyful to be you automatically says that part of your life path is to exude beautiful energy that others can see and feel and emulate, reflect, because you've come to bring light. You've come to share your sacred self, to show others that it is okay to shine, that no one will harm you, no one will hit you, no one will do anything to you, because this is what we've come to do. And that flows along beautifully with the Nekabet to Ma'at, Heru to Chayas, because Heru is the will. Heru is life force, vitality. He is the king. He is the one that sits on the throne and delegates and decides, you know, takes good counsel from Tuhuti, which is the oracle, which is the mouthpiece of God. He takes into account all that needs to be known. He listens to the people. He listens to his counselors. And then weighing all of his options makes a decision. That is what Heru does. With the Nekabet too, Nekabet is the energy of being able to reach out, being able to, with spirit, with your mind, with your thoughts, be able to take what you have inside and share it with the world. Almost as if you are sending out a message out on the ethers, out on the waves. So with the Shekinah, the sacred self, unleash your spirit, express your gifts, dance to the sacred rhythm of life. This is completely falling in line because that is what you're here to do. I bet you're not unfamiliar with occasionally having forethought, foreknowledge of things, where things come to you a moment before, a night before, a week before in some cases, so that when it happens, you're not surprised because your spirit is out there gathering things, bringing things back, your awareness, your id, your ego, if you want to use other phrases, other words. There's a part of you that is unseeing, unknowing, and that part of you goes out into the world and brings back information to you. All of these things you use to make a decision, to move forward, to do things or not do things. And sometimes those things don't make sense to other people because they don't have all the information that you have because all the information you have is sometimes unknowable. And this is in its positive state. So you're getting good gut instincts, okay? Because sometimes gut instincts are really just your spirit bringing back information. And then we have life force, all going back to the Heru. Do you see a pattern here? The life force, Aphrodite. That is number 45 in our Ask of Guides. So let's give you a little taste of what that is. Seduction, libido, sexuality, attraction. Your sexuality is awake and on fire, and your lustier appetites are in search of satisfaction. You're attractive, seductive, and powerful, and a green light of availability to a sexual partner is flashing. This is what makes the world go round, and nothing is more intriguing and exciting than your life force asserting itself. The key to enjoying this fiery essence is containment. You must control and direct your life force energy rather than allow it to control and overwhelm you. You must control and direct your life force energy rather than allow it to control and overwhelm you. Otherwise, you can become mindlessly addicted to your senses, which can be debilitating and enslaving. Delight in your sensual self, but be discriminating about where it leads you. So this is beautifully tying in with the Haru. We're just adding another element onto it because of course, Heru, the king, of course, he has charisma, he has drive. As this card has let us know, you might be a little feisty, you might be a little lusty, you might be 
possibly very much into the physical and enjoying sex, which is a beautiful thing. Don't let it debilitate you. Stay on the positive side. Toe the line so that you're not depleting yourself unnecessarily. And if you do, make sure you do things to rebuild yourself, replenish yourself. Of course, you know, the peanut punch, the okras, the making sure you're taking your vitamins, drinking enough water, of course, getting rest, making sure that you have things like sea moss that builds back up your blood. So going back to some of the Caribbean herbs that really, really build a strong body. If you want, you can also begin eating a lot of ground foods, things that are less processed to keep that life force nice and strong. And the water crystal card, isn't that beautiful? That looks like life force, doesn't it? The way it is so vibrant. It's got so much amber in it, warmth. And that is exactly what we're doing. This is healing. This is releasing. Release all of the things that are creating possibly toxic, addicting behavior for you. Heal them. Use water to help yourself. If you could imagine this crystalline energy, imagine that. Put your water, put your thoughts on this, and before you drink your water, imagine this inside of your water, under your water, infusing it with the healing energies of releasing problems, issues, toxicity, obstacles. Bless the water, thank it, and then drink the water. That will help you to move forward. And then our last two cards, we have the crossroads and we have tree. So ultimately, because you are a leader, because you are the king in charge in an authoritative, in an, in an authoritative position, I'm so sorry, there are going to be challenges where there's no other way to do it except to go straight forward. You can't look left, you can't look right. Going backwards is not an option. You must go forward. This is a grin and bear it kind of a situation where you just have to do it. But in the end, it will be good for you. The lessons that you will learn will grow and foster new opportunities new life paths for you, new choices, things that will allow your life to grow, your relationships to grow, your work, your career to grow. For example, you have a decision to make for work. You have X or Y, Pam or Patty. Let's just keep it really simple are up for a promotion. Pam has qualities that you would want in a manager because that person will directly be under you. She has the punctuality, she has the organization, she has the people skills, she has everything that you want. But Pam does not have the structure. She is not able to um, organize her time well. She's, time management is just not her thing. However, Patty, Time management is amazing. She can do that. But her people skills aren't as good. Her, her ability to exert her will and get people to listen to her and follow her, not as strong as Pam. However, because she is dynamite with that time management, the bottom line gets met. You have a tough decision. Who are you going to choose? You're going to have to sit down and prioritize and organize your thoughts as to what's most important for that department, for that position, so that you make the right decision. And even though that decision may be difficult for you to make, in the end, it will help you to grow. For your life, for those of you who chose deck one, 
these are the things that you are always doing. You're always in a position of making decisions that are difficult, but in the end, in the long run, will help you to grow. You have to maintain your life force. You have to maintain your health. You have to maintain your breath. Because when you do not breathe appropriately and oxygenate your brain so that you're calm and cool and collected so that emotions are not taking you out. You're not allowing your life force, your sacred self to dissipate. You have to hold on to that breath. And this is very important for you. I would suggest doing yoga or some sort of breathing practice, Tai Chi even, or just deep stretching, lunges, slowly, nothing fast and strenuous, just to build endurance and stamina, because that is what is needed for the persons who chose this deck. As a life force, your stamina must be strong. Exercise, get a lot of good rest. Make sure you're going out into nature, okay? I hope this reading has been helpful for you. I hope you have some thoughts that will um, assist you. And thank you very much for watching this video. Please do like, share, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you. For those of you who chose deck two with the lovely fluoride. Isn't that pretty? Can you see that? It's a lovely green. I'm not sure you can see that. Maybe that works better. Okay. For our water crystal, we have spring. Master Jesus, forgiveness, family, Holy Spirit, Hetakuhuti Hetep, Geb, Tu Ma'at, and huh, the man and the woman. Straight off, for those of you who chose this deck, the fluoride, your life path surrounds relationships male female relationships relationships period i would say with your husband your spouse your partner your better half it could also be with family members but very interesting we have master jesus and the holy spirit which is two of the holy trinity if you will so so sorry for the interruption we have Master Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So right there we have two of the Holy Trinity right here. So there's two there, and here we have two again. The male and the female. Master Jesus, the Holy Spirit. <sighs> Forgiveness. You're on the path of light, love, and forgiveness. Father healing is possible at this time. So for those of you who chose this pile, there's a lot of renewal that needs to happen. You see, you have this spring card. Spring is a time of renewal. Earth. Earth does beautiful things in spring. So many people love the spring. Why? Because things begin anew. Things have gestated. Things have been quiescent for many, many months. Growing, developing, dreaming, anchoring themselves in whatever truths they are working on. And then they begin to spring forth during the springtime so that those things that you've been gestating become reality, come into fruition. With Master Jesus here, he also came forth and brought us beautiful new ways of thinking and of being. He brought us things that will help us all to be better people, to show us in his actions how we can live closer to God. He had his disciples around him working with him, helping him, sharing the message, spreading the message of, yes, God's love and also forgiveness.
I'm going to read just a little bit of the Master Jesus from our Keepers of the Light so that you'll have also a little bit more. Forgiveness is an act of self-love. You are being encouraged to know whatever you have done to yourself or others, the divine is not condemning you. You don't have to forget what has happened, but you no longer need to allow your whole story to be defined by a situation that doesn't support your happiness. Jesus, Jesus is here to bring miraculous shifts of healing to you and all those around you and to release you from the burden of self-loathing. He wants you to know that he sees the child of God within you. He also brings clarity and healing to any situations concerning your father, either on earth or in heaven. And with the Holy Spirit, the family card. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of pain happening that you're not quite sure what to do with. Because this whole reading is about the relationships you have with your family, with the men, the women in your family, with all of the people that are close to you. Family, Holy Spirit, security, elation, peace, family, harmony. The Holy Spirit is touching your soul, bringing about a deeper sense of peace and security. The challenges of the recent past are met and thankfully you survived. So at this point, what you need is to be at peace because your family may have had troubles, may have had trauma, may have had things that tore it apart and possibly broke your heart. Which is why this whole reading is about relationships and family. Okay, dear ones, I am back. I am so sorry for the interruptions. And clearly, that is a part of this reading. I have never had such trouble getting a video done before with all of the interruptions, including the bell ringing. So how would we incorporate all of that into this reading? For those of you who chose deck two, the fluoride, whatever interruptions come, whatever crossroads, challenges, Whatever comes your way, you persevere. You got Hedekuru Tihetep. No matter what happens, you do not stop. I don't care what happens. I don't care if they ring the bell as if tomorrow has already started, even though it's still tonight. You keep going because guess what? Hedekuru he makes the forest happen. He goes in with his machete and chops down everything and creates a perfectly flat landscape so civilization can be built. And then we have Geb Tuma'at. Geb is, you have the health, you have the vitality, you have the energy, you have the physical stamina to make sure this happens. Why? Because you're constantly renewing yourself. You are a spring. You are a fountain that fuels the forgiveness that helps the family because you have the strength and the energy to do so. You have that inner goodness, the inner love that God had, that God's son brought to this world so that you can bring it into the relationships around you your husband, your wife, your partner, your significant other. However your relationship flows, you are the one that brings the joy, that brings the levity, that brings the equanimity. That is who you are. You are the one that keeps the peace. Let me again just go ahead with Holy Spirit. I want you to hear that because, again, because there is so much going on here, I want to make sure that this is not lost on you. And that is number 10, part 10. The Holy Spirit is touching your soul, bringing about a deeper sense of peace and security. The challenges of the recent past are met, and thankfully, you survived. Due to the Holy Spirit's influence, your trials have only strengthened your capacity to love, 
leaving you with an even deeper appreciation of those you love. The message for you is peace be with you. All is well. Ask the Holy Spirit to expand your capacity to move beyond personal love and include all of humanity in your prayers for peace. So you are a peace bringer, not just for your family, but for the world. And how you'll do that, you don't have to go out there and help the world. Just you dealing with your family in that beautiful microcosm shows people what could happen if it was expanded, if your love, if your caring, if your forgiveness, if the way you do things in this family unit, this nuclear family situation, if you did that out in the world, wow, wouldn't that be amazing? And that's who you are. So for those who chose this particular spread, know that you are the glue that holds the family together. You are the one that brings the peace, the joy, and the love. And you will never run out because the spring always renews itself, just like you do, just like you do. And no matter what obstacles come forth, the loud children, the bells ringing, buzzing, too much incense, whatever. <laughs> you persevere because you have the ashe in this lifetime. Thank you so much for staying with me. Thank you so much for liking this video, sharing, maybe commenting even. I hope you do. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye. For those of you who chose deck three, this is the Moonstone. You see, it's a beautiful stone. Beautiful little flex in there. Your Water Oracle card is Resonance. Your Seekers of the Light is beautiful Sanat Kumara, Light Activation. Your Ask your guides card is Deceit, Guardian Angels. And you have Amen Temma'at, Sheps Hetep, along with Ship and Mountain. Okay. For those of you who chose this, right up front, I'm going to start with, of course, our Sanat Kumara. Keepers of the Light. When I first saw this deck and this card, I stopped everything and paid attention to this card simply because he drew me. And part of that angel, that being, this being of light, is he is pure light, he is pure goodness. There is nothing better and brighter than Sunat Kamara. It means eternal youth, and he's an advanced cosmic being who is dedicated to helping Earth rise up towards the light. And according to Kyle Gray, the um, author of this deck, he is the leader of the keepers of the light. And uh, he is acknowledged as a god in Hinduism. He has the imprint of God's divine plan with him. So when you have Sanat Kumara, it is very, 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 very high. You have a high calling and it's time for you to stop, pay attention and get really grounded in what you're supposed to do. You're here to light up the world. You may feel that you are being pushed or that there is a lot going on at once. And this is because your energy is magnetic to others and they want it in their life. Take the time to listen to your inner voice. Remember the cosmic light of heaven and draw it into you. That is all you need to do to inspire the world. This is such a beautiful card. You, he almost looks ethereal, otherworldly, 
I don't know if you can see how piercing the eyes are. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. For those of you who follow and understand star seeds and light activation, this is the master of all light activations. He brings truth from beyond the fifth dimension. So with that, let's go right over here to Amen Temma'at Sheps Hetep. Amen Temma'at, total identification with the person. You like, you want, you feel, if you don't have it, you're upset. You know, you know how a five-year-old throws a tantrum, throws themselves on the floor? That's kind of you sometimes. And you know it. You, you know you get like that. You get, you know, in your feelings. However, you don't have to. There is a part of you that can divorce yourself from those emotions and go towards the higher place. It just feels good to do it that way because you get so much more response from people when you do that because you don't want the quote unquote, quote unquote, burden of being the bigger person. But guess what? That's your calling. That is what you came here to do. You came here to be the bigger person. I want to go to Deceit, Guardian Angels, which is your Ask Your Guides card by Sonia Choquette. That is number 27. Treachery, dishonesty, betrayal, exploitation. Your Guardian Angels are present, alerting you to the fact that all isn't as it appears. Something is off and you may be in danger. Pay close attention to what's going on around you as well as what's going on within you. You'll soon notice that there are bad vibes in the air. They signal that someone is potentially able to exploit or manipulate you in some way. So be on the alert. Trust your vibes if things don't feel right. Okay? So going right back into your in your feelings, you're actually just flowing with everything that feels good to you. People are using that against you. So you've got to stop because you're an easy mark. You're an easy target. Because if you're always, you know, upset, emotional, if they can push your button and trigger you and you're going to get, or they're going to get the same response each time, every time they trigger you in just that way, they've got your number. And that's why you need to go to that part of you that knows better. Okay? You also have the backings of your ancestors, the people who have passed on. This is the most positive way that you can get them. This is Shep's Hetep. They are your revered ancestors who have the light of God within them, that want to come and help you, that want to sit right there by your right side and whisper in your ear and tell you the things that you can do to make your life better, to make this relationship better, to make the job better, to make your path in life smoother. This is what they can tell you if you get quiet, if you leave the emotionalism alone, if you stop getting into the tantrums and just breathe. Because a lot of this is you're breathing from your upper chest so that you're shallow breathing, so you're not really, you know, thinking. You're just emoting, you're just feeling. And yes, we have to feel we're human. Oh my gosh, yes, we're human. <laughs> but not all the time, not every day, not 24-7. Because with this reading, this is what's going to take you out. The only real issue in this reading is here, the emotionalism. Here we have the ship, travel, a journey. And then we have mountains. Because ship comes first and then mountains, we're running into a problem because you see the ship is facing the back side or the mountain side, okay? The craggy part. So by you being a bit emotional, you're traveling through rocky territory. You're traveling through situations that are going to be very, very difficult. It's going to be an upward climb, if you will, in order to get where you need to go. And you can avert all of that by going to that higher place, by going to the 
better part of yourself, the higher part of yourself, and living in that sphere, living at that level, bringing in the words of your ancestors to sail over the mountains. Because when you're that high, the mountains mean nothing. You actually can fly. You can fly. All right? And the last card that we have is resonance, wisdom. This is our water oracle. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You have to resonate at a certain frequency in order to bypass some of this. So begin researching frequencies. It's very easy to find. Look up the frequency of love. Look up the frequency of fear. Look up the frequency of hate. Look up the frequency of joy. Look up the frequency of, say, a piece of, like what I'm listening to here, Canon in D. You're going to see that certain things resonate at a higher hertz rather than other things. You're going to have to learn to resonate at a higher level. There are sounds that are so high the human ear can't hear it, right? But dogs can, right? So resonate higher to get past the deceit of others that are trying to come in and harm you. That resonate higher so you get away from your own law, low thoughts, low energies, low feelings, depression, lethargy. Or just, you know, you're being spoiled a little bit. It is time to move past all of that and come to a place of acceptance. The moonstone. The moonstone is a perfect stone for this because the moonstone belongs to the crown chakra. Aligning your crown chakra will help you. If you balance it, it will keep you. It will keep you from tipping the scales one way or another and bring you into the balance of what you're supposed to be. I hope this reading has resonated with you and that you take some thoughts and some ideas uh, about your life path and what you can do to help yourself. Please do like, share, and subscribe. And thank you so much for listening to this video and checking, checking it out. Have a great day. For those of you who chose deck number four, it is the Unakite. It is green with dark orange flecks in there. This is all about health, that particular stone, and digestion and healing the body. That's what that stone is for. Let's see if it has any resonance with this reading at all. And we don't have any cards that are reversed here. <sighs> okay, so we have right brain, Hado, Mercury, open communication, celebration, joy guides, Oset, Hetep, and Nicobet, Temchayas, clouds, and fish. All right, so we have Mercury, open communications. Get a weight off your chest. Speak up with love and be heard. I actually pulled this card earlier this week for the general readings that I do on um, Instagram. I post pretty much a daily reading for the energy of the day. And Mercury is all about that thing that you haven't been wanting to say. It's time to say it. But don't say it with anger, with upsetment, with fear, with rage. No, you say it with peace. You say it with, you know, equanimity. You just say it, not to hurt anybody, not to point fingers, you just say it. It's a fact. And, and that's another thing, stick to the facts. Don't try and add on any judgments and any particular emotional spin. What are the facts? Just the facts, man, just the facts. That's what Mercury is about. Say your piece. And the way you say it is, this is what happened. This is how I felt. This is how I perceived it. 
whether that's right or not, that's your perception. And no one can get upset at you for your perception. I mean, they can get upset, but that's their issue. You're not saying you're wrong, you're this, you're that. No, you're saying this is what happened. These are the actual details of the situation. This is how I perceived it. This is how it affected X, Y, and Z. If it's a work situation, you have to include all of that because in a work situation, that is how it has to go. It has to go in terms of very, very black and white and how it affects the whole, the team, the group, the unit. And that's what you have to do because with this as your life path, your incarnation objective, the reason why you're here, your communication is very, very important this entire lifetime. And because you have Oset Hetep, Oset is the seed of the emotion. She's the mother. She nurtures the next generation. She nurtures little Haru, who is going to grow up and become the king of the nation. But she can get in her feelings as well. You don't have that as you're always in your feeling, but because Oset Hetep is in its most positive state, that means it can go positively fabulous or positively negative. Generally speaking, you are going to be able to manage your emotions. You're going to know when you've you know, gone off the deep end a little bit and can you know, pull yourself back you have that balance. However, going into the next card, you have Mechabet Tamchayas. So sometimes your light, your peace, your emotions will be eclipsed by passing things. You saw something on TV. You saw there was an earthquake in California, in the middle of the country. There was an eruption. Um, there was a flood. Uh, you saw some children that were not being well taken care of. You saw, you know, oh my God, <sighs> all of the various trafficking of young women on TV, in the newspaper, in your favorite um, media outlet. And you were just overtaken with emotion. These are the things that will affect you. And you're going to have to watch yourself for that because you are easily affected by things out in the world that touch your heart, especially when it relates to children, to young women, to things that are near and dear to you. You almost are a cause type of person. You want to go out there and, and just fix it, just fix it. And you have to be easy. You cannot go out there and just take everything by storm and just chop it up and just take care of it right now. You can work with others to get that done. You have to use this celebration, this joy, in order to make things happen. You have to use that as your engine. Let's go to 14 and get a little bit more on that card. Celebration, joy guides, alignment, harvest, bonding, marriage. You are entering a period of great expansion and celebration. Your joy guides are at hand, ushering you into a season of abundant celebration and hospitality. You're loved, accepted, and trusted by those around you. This is a time when life gives back to you. You may become engaged, get married, receive a promotion, land a deal, or just get a long-awaited lucky break. Whatever you desire, your joy guides are urging you to prepare for because it's surely coming. Realize that life's tides turn your way. The soon to become realized positive flow of events isn't just a fluke or an accident or just the luck of the draw. Rather, it's the natural outcome of your unwavering efforts and commitment to your dreams and goals. Your joy guides message, plan for the party. You'll soon have reason to celebrate. So don't go off on your missions and be so gung-ho that you don't enjoy. This is the life that you've always wanted. If you believe in previous lifetimes, past lifetimes, this lifetime is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lifetime for you. You are getting married. 
If you're not already married, it's going to be happening very soon for you. If you don't want the marriage, but you just want a relationship, a committed relationship, it's yours. Whatever it is that you seek, it's coming to you. Don't take yourself off pattern by getting yourself mixed up in causes and creating problems for yourself with communications. Because right here, we have clouds with fish. Clouds is confusion, uncertainty, uh, doubt, anxieties, just really foggy, foggy thinking. But this, this is your money, the flow of money into your life. It could also be just the flow of things. And what's interesting is these two, of course, are related. Oset is the mother of the ocean. And fish, they swim in the ocean. So what we are saying here, this whole bottom row here is you have the ability to keep yourself in check. You have the ability to manage yourself. However, things that are outside of you can take you out. Things that, you know, you have no control over. But how you can control them is by watching your thoughts, your beliefs, and putting the good energy out there. And when you have a way to handle the situation through good communications, possibly working with a group of people that are of like mind, you can work on these things and fix these things. Get rid of the confusion that may have arisen in that situation, the ambiguity, the uncertainty, and follow the natural flow of that situation to fix it. Because you are still the fixer. You really are, but it's the way you fix things. You cannot fix things out of balance because this is a good life for you. You've come to enjoy but who you are is a person who wants to help. You are a person that is engaged in taking care of having the welfare of others. Others who are, who, who are not as strong as you. You have their welfare at heart, just like a true mother would. Just like a true mother would. She's the mother of a nation, just like you are. The nation is your family. The nation is the organization that you are trumpeting for. You might work for a nonprofit. You might work in a uh, trauma unit for young children. You might, in some way, shape, or form, be a social worker, a counselor, a therapist. Do not bring your problems home, all right? With this right brain, use your right brain to help you to grow and develop you in areas that you love and you enjoy. But don't let your right brain swamp you. The right brain, as you know, is the seat of creativity, things that are associative, things that may not follow a linear pattern, but guess what? You get to the end goal. That is what the water crystal for right brain looks like. Isn't it beautiful? It's just gorgeous water crystal okay so use your right brain to help you to relax to calm down to find solutions creative solutions that will not deplete and harm you that will bring peace and joy and relieve anxiety so you might need to do a lot of things to calm you maybe some gardening maybe you like swimming maybe you like being near the ocean Maybe you want to go ahead and organize things to help the ocean to remove, you know, all of that plastic from the ocean. Maybe these things are your calling. But either way, whatever you're doing, you have to communicate with those of like mind to help you to do it, to create that group of other like-minded people who are also using their creativity and their right-brainedness in order to remove the ambiguity, the foggy thinking, so that the flow of that project, of that situation, can go the way it needs to. So for those of you who chose deck four as your life path, as your reason to be in this lifetime, 
You are here to help heal. You are here to help lift, uplift, to help others communicate and be heard. You cannot waste your life force on things that you cannot assist with. You have to know when you can control things, when you can't, and what is that saying? The wisdom to know the difference. Yes, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That should be something that you say to yourself over and over and over again, because with this kind of energy that you bring to the table this lifetime, you're always going to knock your head against a wall trying to get things done. And people are not going to hear you because they're not going to hear it in an emotional way. But if you use your creativity, if you use this joy and celebration because everybody's really around you, provided you're not in your emotions and you're not, you know, feeling all crazy and saying all crazy things and screaming and yelling and going crazy because you're just like upset. If you're communicating in an effective way, you've got the masses around you to help you to get rid of this foggy thinking so things flow the way they need to flow. Okay? So I hope this reading has been helpful for you. I hope this life path, incarnation objective, what you've come here to do has worked, that you've gotten something out of it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.